I've got it. So it says it's live on Facebook. Okay, well, that's saying we're live. So let me. All right. Sure. So we are live. Hello, Facebook. This is Mark Braxton. If yeah, you okay. don't know me, you might know me from the podcast, uh, Living Life and Love, Bit Friends Podcast. Woo um, we are here today uh, to talk about the convention that's coming up in June. And I wanted um, Alicia to have an opportunity to share some facts about the convention and, and give some other details. And I like to thank those of you who are here with us um, that I can see on my screen and also those of you who are watching us on Facebook. So if you guys are ready, first of all, welcome Alicia, Tiffany, from Minnesota, welcome. Uh, welcome Dawn, where are you from Dawn? Indiana, Indiana, and we have Millicent, where are you from Millie? Connecticut. From Connecticut and I'm okay. from Raleigh, North Carolina. So we're from all over the place. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we can get this discussion moving and you know some of us want to go to sleep some of us want to go to watch netflix and chill out and all that other good stuff so let's talk about the history of world vitiligo day like when did it start and where did it start and how did it start okay um so it started in africa um with a lady oh gosh i'm gonna butcher her name so i'm not gonna try um but they had a group there that wanted to recognize World Vitiligo. So Michael Jackson died in 2009 on June 25th. So that kind of triggered this idea of we should celebrate his life and his vitiligo through a celebration of World Vitiligo Day. And so that's kind of where it birthed from. So like if you see some of the early pictures um, with World Vitiligo Day, you'll see him wearing like a Rock With You t-shirt and it's a, it's a silhouette of Michael Jackson. She teamed up with a, a man named uh, Jan Volley from the Vitiligo Research Foundation. Um, and they worked together to get um, this recognized by the UN. They had to go through a signature process of getting up to 500,000 signatures to get it on the UN calendar of um, famous or not famous important days of the year. And so they were able to get that. Um, it took a few years, but they were able to get it recognized by the UN as an event. And so every year since, and, and I think this was 2000, nah, I don't know, 2010, sorry, um, uh, that they got it recognized. And every year since then, uh, other groups across the world have recognized that day as World well, LIGO Day. And that's good information to know because a lot of times we think it just, it was just there. We magically came up with World Vitiligo Day. And knowing the history, I think it's important for everybody to understand it, that it didn't actually start here in the US. Right. It started in the country in Africa. So that's great information for people to know and why it was done and why we chose, you know, June 25th. So there we go. We have some historical facts behind it. <laughs> but let's talk about the importance of attending a World Vitiligo Day. Why is it important for us? Um. Millie, do you feel comfortable answering that? <laughs> I can tell you why I think it is, but let's find somebody else. I can't say it because I haven't been to one yet. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I, I'm the new kid on the block. Either. This will be my first. Um, you know what? Well, it's important, especially for first timers, just to know more about vitiligo. And also, it's a good thing to be in that space with people just like you. And I remember my first conference and, you know, I was just like, I couldn't believe it because, you know, some people where they live at, they don't see people who looks like them. And you never know, going to this conference, you get more educated and, you know, and also it's, it's like a bridge to, uh, to advocate awareness about vitiligo. Um, another thing you never know, people have come to these conferences and made lifelong friends. They find more about the research that's being done. Um, it's just a lot of things you learn. Like you said, this is the great speakers that are coming. Um, so, you know, it's also a learning experience. So that's what I got out of it, you know, when I went to the conferences, so. And, and thank you for that, Millie. And, and what I think is good too for us mm -hmm. as a community to see other people with vitiligo, because a lot of times we think there's only one type and that's the type that every uh, clinician wants to see, every, um, um, 
when they have like a trial or something, they want to see the acro facial. They want to see it on your face. Mm -hmm. But they forget that there are five different types of vitiligo. So when you go to a conference, and, and this is what I'm thinking, what I'm hoping to see, that we're going to see all types. You know, whether you're completely depigmented or you're segmental, you know, all these different types. And we're going to see that we're still one big family, regardless of how little, how much, you know, depigmentation you have. Excuse me. Um, you know, it's, we're, we're one big family, you know, it's not about the location. It's about, we have the same thing in common and what we should be doing at these conferences and everywhere else is supporting each other. And this, and to me, that's what I want to get out of it. When I see everyone in Minnesota, June 24th, 5th and going home on the 6th. Yes. Yep. So I, yep. Dawn, do you have anything you want to add? This is my first time going to, so I'm excited. And I think the reason why I really want to go, because when I was first diagnosed, diagnosed with the only person I knew had it was Michael Jackson. And I really didn't get to take a lot of pictures during the stages of my depigmentation. But just to see everyone, like you mentioned, to see everyone from where, oh, OK, I had her same complexion. Or I had his same complexion. And just the stages of gradually losing all my, my pigmentation. So right. just to go back and see where it has progressed from where I used to look like to now. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Tiffany, anything you want to add? I know this would be your first time as well. Well, um, I'm excited that it's in Minnesota because it's a wonderful place to be. So I, I am excited to welcome everyone to this great state. We have a lot to offer here in addition to hosting the conference, but um, since this will be my first time, uh, I'm just thrilled to meet everyone. And I know that's gonna be overwhelming and emotional, but I think we're all gonna be sharing the same emotions. And I'm excited for that because it's not, I'm not gonna be alone. Everyone's gonna, you know, understand how I'm feeling and I'm just gonna be embraced and loved for who I am. And I love that. So I'm just excited to just be around my people, you know, people that I can understand and that is just so exciting to me. And I just cannot wait to just meet everyone and be in a big group and room with everyone that is just like me. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, and I think it'll be a good opportunity for those who are listening on Facebook and watching that we, we put some of the myths about vitiligo aside because there are times when we feel like it only affects one community and not the other. Mm -hmm. But this is a universal condition that we have. That means around the world, doesn't matter, you know, any affiliations you have or any beliefs, it doesn't matter. Yep. You know, vitiligo is not sitting there looking, huh, let me see, let me find that person over there. No, if you have it, you have it, you know. And what we have to do is put aside some of our, our, our personal beliefs about people and look at each other as, like you said, one big family, because we have the condition, you know. And I've been told before that, you don't have it like on. I'm thinking, uh, what's this? You know, I have it on my legs, but you can't, I, I have it on my face, but you can't see it. Yep. Uh, it's around my mouth. Yep. But none of that really matters. Like we, we're one big family. We're here to support each other. So I think that's the big thing we need to take out of all this going to World Vitiligo Day is that we're there as a family mm -hmm. to engage each other, to learn from each other, to support each other, to share love to each other. You know, that's the important part. Um, I so- that's the biggest thing yes. that I've gotten out of all these conferences is I have met people that I never would have known had it not been for my skin. So my girl, Millie, I never would have met her and I absolutely adore her, but I never would have crossed paths with her. And I love you all, of course, but you know, I never would have crossed paths with anybody. And, and that's be what, sitting here today we not, together. I never, absolutely. And, and, and that's, what's so beautiful is like you, like she was saying, you come in a room, everybody's together you know we all bleed red we're all together we're one big beautiful happy family and that, and no one can take that away from us and i think that for us to be able to have a commonality and be beautiful and loving each other can translate to the rest of the world like look we can do this and, right, and absolutely. i know about that ligo right and and we can we can share by example we're showing people hey regardless of what we look like there's still love you know to be spread around this world absolutely um yeah. Can and, I say and, something, Mark? Can I say yes, something? Yes, go ahead, Millie. I'm glad what you, you just said um, that, you know, we come together, one division, one, one family, vitiligo family. And um, 
that's good to know. That's good to see. That's good to hear because I am hoping a lot of kids come, a lot of teenagers come because, you know, we're doing what we're doing now, but we ain't going to be doing it forever. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones that are going to be walking into, you know, standing on our shoulders. I keep talking about that. And I always say we got to leave a footprint for them. And, you know, I don't want them to step in my footprint. I want them, their footprint to be even bigger, you know, with the um, advocacy and the educating and dedicating their self uh, to vitiligo awareness. So I'm hoping that a lot of uh, kids come in, you know, come um, rather drive or fly or whatever. But I was saying, I said, say, I hope a lot of teenagers come. I really do. Because looking at these media platforms, seeing them in these ads, you know, different ads and stuff like that. I mean, I was at 15, which when I did give it like, I was never like that. So I'm excited for the youth of today with vitiligo and how they are just bringing awareness to them, you know, rather through their media platform or posing in a magazine or doing commercials. So I'm excited for the youth for today. I am, I'm really excited about that. One thing I can say, you're not alone. Go ahead, dog. I said to let them know that they're not alone, to let them know right. that they have a, a support group, that, that whatever they're going through, we we done been through it. So we can show them, okay, you can do this, 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 and this. Make sure you don't do that, but just continue to go forward. So yeah, I, I'm with you 100%. And what I was going to add, you know, this, this generation is different than we are. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you're over 35, we came through a time that was a little tough. We, we were hard on each other. You know, we said some very insensitive things, um, sometimes now aren't disgusting things about people with disabilities and various challenges. But I think this generation of kids, they're growing up where they have learned to accept people who look different, act different, walk different, talk different. So they support, they're supporting each other at a younger age. So I do feel like they are steps above us. We're getting to where we're trying to learn how to support each other, but we still hold on to some old fashioned values that were taught to us by our parents and grandparents. And whereas our kids are like, I'm not like that. You know, I'm different, you know? So I do think they do have an advantage over us, but we have to, like you said, we still have to put the blueprint out there for them to keep this going. And I think they will. The, the kids are very bright. You know, even when I did presentations in the schools, the kids are very bright. They're on it. So I think going forward, as they become adults, these conferences are going to be much bigger than what we've ever seen. Yep. You know, I, I think if we let them take the reins, we're going to see things we've never experienced before or even thought about, you know, so they're really going to take it in a different direction. Let me ask you, let's move back to uh, World Vitiligo Day. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's talk about World Vitiligo Day in Minnesota. Um, who are some of the um, sponsors and the host of it? Let's talk about that, the sponsorships and the host. So the main sponsor of the event is the Global Vitiligo Foundation. Um, so they are you know, a, a group of doctors and, and people with vitiligo formed several years ago um, for the betterment of treatments and research and, and everything. So they are our main um sponsors of it which they've been getting you know they get sponsors from various companies too so it all kind of funnels through um my vitiligo teams is also teaming up with the conference um not only to help um the marketing part of it but also to be a part of it and then obviously us the hosts here uh minnesota vit friends is finally going to host in 2022 so we've been waiting for this uh, three years in the making basically so we're ready. We have about 325 members on our uh, on our group here in Minnesota, um, and we've been around. Actually, it was funny because today on my timeline from Facebook, you know how you have the memories. Today was the first day of our very first meeting, like seven years ago. Wow! So there you go. <laughs> so we're <Wow>. ready. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, the the pandemic really change the dynamics of everything that slowed us down that stopped us from interacting in person uh, is still here, but we have an opportunity to get out there and um, and everybody has to do it their way, you mm -hmm. know? So if you still wanna wear a mask, you wear a mask, you know? If you're not comfortable, we understand because, you know, we, you do have to think about your health first. 
Um, but, you know, we also have precautions, you know, for those who have been vaccinated, you know, and those who choose not to is still your choice. But, you know, we have the sanitizer and things like that um, that you could still use. Um, going back to the conference itself, uh, what are some events we can look forward to? What are some events you can look forward to? So um, Friday night, we are bringing it back, the men's and women's session. Um, this was very popular in Houston. Um, and so we, but basically what we'll do is, you know, we'll, we'll register, um, we'll have vendor tables available for people that are wanting to like shop or, or see different groups. And then, um, but yeah, the men's and women's event, basically it's, it's men in one room, women in the other, and we just talk. Uh, it's just, you know, sharing your feelings, sharing your thoughts. We talked about dating last time. We talked about jobs. We talked about just life. And it was just a great way for people to connect um, and just kind of an easygoing atmosphere. So that was a very popular thing that happened um, in Houston that we definitely are, we are doing. Um, what else? What do you want to talk? Do you want to bring anything? <laughs> um, uh, another event that we are excited to share with everyone is our comedy club hit people friends that are local here so uh gutty's comedy club well i'm gonna just mention them because they're nice That's uh, how we love started. what's that yeah, yeah we love gutty so um <laughs> steve rivera is that how you say his last name yeah, yeah. steve rivera um out of indianapolis yes he owns uh gutty's comedy club here in minnesota which is at the southdale mall um we have connected with him and we are gonna have three comedians mm -hmm. I keep looking at her because she knows everything and I'm just making sure I'm getting the <laughs> correct information. Uh, we'll have three comedians uh, on Saturday mm -hmm. night mm -hmm. and it's just going to be fun because everyone loves laughing, right? Because this is life. It doesn't have to be all serious and, you know, educational. It could be fun too. So this is just going to be a great time to just have a little fun and laugh and it's going to be clean comedy. So uh, we're really excited to bring them to uh, the World at LIGO Conference and, today. And what's special about those three comedians? Oh, obviously, the most special thing about these three comedians is that they all have at LIGO. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. We had a little meeting with them uh, like a couple weeks ago. And oh, even just the meeting so we had hard. with them, they were hilarious. Like, yeah. just conversation with them was funny. So I can't wait to actually hear their skits. And I think everyone's going to really enjoy that part of it, too. So yep. definitely something to look forward to. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and let me jump, let me okay. let me say something real quick. Um, and you're talking about comedy. You know, I, I think we focus so much on the effects of our skin uh, that vitiligo has in our skin that we forget how to laugh. We forget how to have fun sometimes. Yep. And 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 that's important that we are bringing that back. You know, we have to be able to enjoy life. Absolutely. You know, uh, life doesn't stop because we have vitiligo. Does it alter it? Does it change it? Yes, of course. It makes it challenging sometimes to walk outside to be a part of certain things. But, you know, this gives us, a, us an opportunity to laugh, to have some fun, you know, to forget about our skin for the moment and just focus on what's being said on the stage. So mm -hmm. it is very important. And, and I encourage everyone to find something that takes your mind away from what you look like, to take your mind away from your skin and just, you can enjoy whether it's reading a book, writing, drawing, whatever it is, you know, use that to focus on something else. Because if we keep looking at this, it, it's always going to bother us. It, yep. it will. Yep. Um, who are some of the uh, guest speakers for the conference? Oh, let's see here. Um, so we have a, a motivational speaker that will be speaking Saturday morning. His name is James Williams. He actually- Been is on the podcast. Movie. <laughs> um, you met him on the podcast. He is yes. a fantastic guy. He does not have the LIGO, but he has just a, a unique uh, background and approach to life. And he is just, oh, I love him. So uh, he'll he'll get us going on Saturday morning, which I think is um, so important to just kind of- Great kick start it. to the day. Yes, great start to the day. Get everybody going. Um, you know, of course, we'll have our GBF doctors on hand. Um, Dr. John Harris, Dr. David Rosemarin. Um, Dr. Huggins. Um, these are the leading experts of vitiligo that are solely um, basing their practice basically on treating vitiligo. So um, they will be part of the mix with the doctor session. Um, Dr. Pandya, I almost forgot him. Um, and then on the flip side, we'll also have a session for 
um, makeup, Crystal Alexis, who is a professional makeup artist, is going to talk to us about, you know, ways to enhance your beauty. If you want to cover up, here's what you can try. Um, she's going to be part of it. Um, Mark, you're going to run a session for us. <laughs> yes, <be> here, Mark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'll run a session for, yes, for the absolutely. parents and the siblings. Yeah, yes. yeah. We're yes. going to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's one thing that we wanted to do. I'm kind of going off another tangent. But that's one thing that was really important that was feedback we had was vitiligo affects the whole family. And so right. we really want to make this a family affair um, because, you know, I grew up with it as a child. So my sister dealt with it. My parents dealt with it. So there is stuff that, um, and we discovered this when we were shooting the documentary, stuff that came up that they didn't realize that they had kind of suppressed. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's going to be a session just for parents and siblings and spouses with vitiligo. So nobody with vitiligo will be in that room. It's just for them. And then there's going to be a session for just adults with vitiligo and then a session with just for kids. So each part of that little group will be able to express and talk freely without feeling like, I don't want to say something to hurt their feelings. You know, they just, because I think, you know, parents might not say something because they don't want little Jimmy to feel bad, you know. Um, well, and the guilt that they the might guilt. feel too. And I just want to add a little bit like, so my, I was a child when I did a Lego too, and my mom is a huge part of my life and she's attending the conference as well. And um, for her to be in a room without me, I think is gonna be really impactful for her. Mm -hmm. You know, even though she doesn't have vitiligo, she had to deal with it as well. So I think that's gonna be incredibly important for her to express herself and to talk about it too, without feeling bad about what she's gonna say in front of me and all that. So it's, it's super important for family members, parents, brothers, sisters to be included in this as well. Absolutely. Yeah, because when we, when we talk about education and awareness, a lot of times we are talking to each other, but we forget that vitiligo impacts everyone around us and everyone we interact with, you know, Absolutely. coworkers, um, businesses, um, you know, business partners. Um, you know, if you're in a relationship or if you're married, you have kids, you know, it impacts everyone. And, and people often don't know how to approach us mm -hmm. and talk to us about it. Mm -hmm. So it becomes the elephant in the room in families, but they don't say anything. Right. They just assume you're okay. Yeah. And maybe I am okay, but sometimes it's the family member who's not okay. Mm -hmm. They're struggling with it. So maybe after, you know, after we have that discussion, it'll open up more discussions in the households where they can talk about living with vitiligo, the challenges, how it affects them, how it affects you, how it affects, you know, the kids, the siblings, and give them some encouragement on ways to talk to us, you know, um, because the one thing I always say that when you say it doesn't bother me, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> you know, don't say it doesn't bother me, say, hey, how does it make you feel living with vitiligo? Mm -hmm. Boom, that opens up the discussion point right there, and we can talk to each other. Um, and, and it goes to friendships too, you know, long family friends or people you've known for ages that all of a sudden, you know, you have vitiligo now and they don't know how to approach you. They don't know how to talk to you. It opens up, it opens up, it opens up the channel of communication, you know, yeah. and that's what this is all about. That's a big part of that awareness education that we should be pushing, um, talking outside of our circles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Millie, Dawn, anything you want to add? No, not really. I just, you know, like I said, I'm just, I'm looking forward to it. Just looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to the shopping. <laughs> We're going to get there. Don't, don't jump ahead. We're going to get there. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I said, oh, I got to bring my extra bags with me, my extra grocery <laughs> bags to take my stuff. With me. Bring the empty one to send it back. Yep, yep. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to get to some of the fun stuff. Uh, let, let, let's get through the conference stuff. Then we're going to talk about some of the other exciting things outside of it. Um, real quick. So somebody's listening right now and they're going, oh, I want to go to this conference now. What do I do? How do they register for the conference and how much is it going to cost? Okay. So to register for the conference, you go to 2022.wvdusa.org. 
Um, I'm going to pull up so I don't gonna say anything wrong with the registration prices. So the early bird registration actually is ending on the 15th, which is that Friday or Saturday. I don't know. Um, and that price is $175. After that, it bumps up to $200. So getting your registration in early is a really good idea. Um, that is for ages um, 18 and older. If you're 6 through 17, it's 125 so it gives you a little bit of a discount if you're young and if it's five and younger, they're free. So I will tell people the bulk of your pricing seriously pays for pretty much the food. <laughs> so <clears throat> these events are not cheap to put on. Um, so part of your registration is the, is your meals for all of Saturday and Sunday breakfast. And I would say about 80% of that pricing is honestly to cover food costs. It's crazy, yeah, like especially meals will be covered. Those days. Meals will be covered. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it will, you know, it's going to include not the conference. It's going to include all the speakers, all the, all the fun, all the stuff that comes along with it, plus your meals. So, um, so yeah, people are like, Oh Jesus, a lot. And it's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> if you only knew. <laughs> hey, Alicia. Can I yeah. pause for a second? I want to welcome Shariga. I didn't realize she was here. And I just happened to see her name pop up. Hey. Hey, how are you? Hey there. Um, I'm good. I do have a question. Um, so I did register yes. for the conference, but recently I found that I will not be able to travel due to medical reasons. Um, but I wanted to know, is it possible that the conference will be streamed? Um, that is a question that I can't 100% answer. Um, we're okay. hoping that that will happen. I will tell you that streaming costs are extremely expensive. So we're hoping okay. that one of the sponsors will come through and help with that, but we don't know for sure. So okay. um, I, I don't know. <laughs> so Alicia, so Alicia here's a question. Alicia, there's, here's a question. Do you think they would possibly allow us to go live on Facebook and absolutely. we can share bits and pieces? Anybody that wants to go live, absolutely. Right. We encourage so, any of that. And you'll so that's a, that. Yeah. Right. So that's a great way of helping, you know, if you are at the conference and go live on Facebook and you can help share, share it with the community. That way we can see it, you know. Yeah, streaming will cost money. Um and, and we don't know what kind of restrictions, you know, legal restrictions we may have in that department, you yeah, know, dealing true. with the sponsors. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll try to have everybody, um, if they post, use the same hashtag because then when it, excuse me. <laughs> so then when anybody tries to search things about vitiligo, it's the white claw. Um, <laughs> who tries to find anything about vitiligo, they'll be able, about that specific conference if they search WVD 2020. Um, they'll be able to pull up any information with it too. So anything 2022, there, right? Did I do it again? No, 2022. <laughs> I tried so hard <laughs> to get that off of my head. <laughs> no, you didn't. Get okay, good. Um, yeah, that's what we'll kind of try to do to tie it all together is everybody just, whenever they post, use the same hashtag so it can all be found again um, later on. But yeah, but yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. But I will, um, I will, e I'll have um, the GBF email you at, about, mm -hmm. um, a refund or whatever for your conference too. Okay. I hate I won't be able to attend in person. It would have been my first conference. I know. And, and she's from North Carolina, so hopefully we'll get a chance to meet her too. I have a feeling we'll be coming to North Carolina within the next Yeah. Week. I have a feeling. I don't no, know. That's my no guess. worries, you know. We, we can't, you know, who knows? We don't know what the future holds. Hey. I want to go. <laughs> um, but, but here's the next question. So, I'm going to the conference, I'm on my flight, flight lands, I get to the airport. Now what? Where now, am I staying? Where, where, where's the conference relate in relation to the airport and how do I get there? It is about mm, five miles from the airport is what I would say. So um, if you go onto the website, if you click under transportation, um, where did it go? Um, it will give you the information about the hotel shuttle. Um, it is free, which is great. So you don't have to Uber, you don't have to taxi, you don't have to rent a car. Um, it comes every half an hour from like 
4 a.m. to midnight. So if you're past midnight, well, sorry, you're gonna have to Uber. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like a five dollar Uber. I guess. Yeah, so. <laughs> it won't be much. It won't be much. But there, it's out of Terminal One. So people, there are two terminals in in the MS Minneapolis St. Paul International mm -hmm. MSP. Um, so it will be at the but. Um, what am I trying to say? There is a shuttle bay or whatever for that. So yeah, if you go into transportation, um, there's a thing that says hotel shuttle to and from the airport. Um, and that will give you, it must be down here. Yeah, some shuttle information okay. is how that works. So let me ask this question. If you fly into the airport and you just happen to be in terminal two, you have to take the tram or whatever yes. to go to terminal one and yep. then you can take the shuttle to the hotel. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And it, it and you can read everything very well. I mean, there's signs everywhere, so it's very convenient, very easy, not yeah. difficult at all. Everyone is Minnesota nice. Everyone's very helpful. You ask anyone where to go, what to do, they'll tell you their life story. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll tell and you how to get there. Say goodbye. <laughs> That's a Minnesota inside joke. So we have true. like a Minnesota goodbye. We're like we have Five a hard time saying long. bye because we want to talk all the time. <laughs> No. Now, yeah. will they know about this conference? So we, we yeah. walk in and they're like, should. hey, I'm going to this place. And they're like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. We we go down the, the road. <laughs> 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 All right. So so let's get to the fun part. Okay. Before we get to, to the adult fun part, what's going on with the kids? They have something special planned. They do have something special planned. So as Millie hinted, there's some shopping area that's right next door to the conference. Literally what, like two what blocks, shopping right? shopping area? What shopping area is it? It's the Mall of America. It what? is the largest mall in America, America. in the yeah. United States. And so it is literally across the street. You can see it from the hotel room. And on the afternoon of Saturday from 1 to 4.30, um, the kids and the teens get to go across the street and go to an inside the mall theme park. So there's roller coasters, there's water rides, there's Is it like SpongeBob World? SpongeBob Nickelodeon, Universe. Nickelodeon Universe. Nickelodeon Universe. Do they need chaperones? There will be chaperones <laughs> available. Yeah. Well, if I mean people like want to come, you can. So um the children's tickets will be free. If adults go with them and they want to ride, they will have to pay. Um, but the children's tickets will be free for that. But it's it's a fun place. And it's not like little wussy rides. There's some no, big there's rides like on there. Coasters, like all over. Yeah. There's, like there's, like there's that one spot. Water shoes thing. Yeah, there's yeah, the like a Ninja shoes. Turtle thing. There's so many fun rides. There's some fun rides. So it's not it's not like, all for I the week. <laughs> go there once every couple months. Do you? Yeah. Oh, my God. I, love I know. It. So fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Okay. Now let's get to the Millie question. The shopping. The shopping. We know the mall is there. So. What else? We know the mall's there, but what, what type of shops can you expect? Um, you name it, man. You name it. <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are the the big anchors like, are booming? Nordstrom, Nordstrom, Nordstrom and Macy's. Macy's right? Yeah. Yeah. Those um, are, the, are the big ones, but yeah. gosh, it, it, there's hundreds. Like you can't even you name it. There's a croc store. How, a how many level? How many levels is the mall? How many Four. levels? <laughs> oh wow. Okay. So three levels of shopping. The fourth is more like. The movie theater, yeah, the there's comedy yeah. club, bars. Okay. Yep. Gosh, um, I mean, like I said, you name it. It's huge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> bring your right. own. So, so there's bring. something for everybody. Good. But in for our days. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. And if you don't want to walk, because it is a little bit of a, not a bad hike, but a little hike. Um, there is also a free shuttle from the hotel to the Mall of America. And that runs every hour. Awesome. Which is cool. Okay. Now, here, here's the major question for a lot of people. You know, it's it's in uh, Minnesota, and we know that there's a purple place there. Can you tell us about that? And and you know what? Not not that purple, but the other purple. Purple, Morris. <laughs> I think you won't know as much. I so, don't know. <laughs> come on, Prince, what what can you tell us about Prince's estate? Yeah. Okay, I know Crazy where part. it is. He knows where. What town is it? Ah, uh, Shakopee, I think. What's that in Shakopee? It's not. <laughs> Oh, it's in Chanhassen. Okay, I was close. Okay, never mind. She's no good to me. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> it, oh, you asked me. You knew. I thought you knew. So I'm a, actually a native Iowan. I was going to the native Minnesota. Uh, no, it's Paisley Park. It's Prince's estate that he lived in because he's from Minnesota. He's from Minneapolis South, which is where we are, as where he graduated high school. Um, so yeah, his estate has been there, gosh, a long time, Very long time, a long time. So they offer tours. I mean, they have his guitars, they have his clothing. He recorded there. 
um, it's, it's pretty cool. So I believe it's 16 miles from the hotel to Paisley Park. It's a super easy drive. I don't know what the Uber would cost would be. And they have different levels of tours. So they have a basic tour, which I think starts at like 48 bucks. You can go all the way to like 200 and something to do like a giant three hour tour if you want, where it's like all in the depths and everything. So um, I've heard from people that have done it and they said it's amazing, especially if you're a giant Prince fan, which obviously a lot of people are. Yes. And I like Prince too. Uh, I, I've only heard very, very good things about it. It's I like do. a great experience. So fun. Yes. I personally haven't done it, but I've heard nothing but good things. I have heard they're highly recommend. On, yeah. <laughs> Someone said they're closed on Wednesday. So if you're coming in Wednesday, they're, they are closed on that day. So, um, but Thursday would be your option, I think. Okay. Sounds good. Fun. Sounds good. Look, I, I, and, and we're getting a lot of information. I think a lot of good information for people who want to know, you know, why, what's happening there, you know, the importance of the World Vitiligo Day 2022. Um, anything else that you can share with our listeners um, that, that might be helpful? Uh, it's going to be Minnesota in June, so the weather's going to be beautiful. <laughs> Now, what does that mean? Beautiful, like 80 <laughs> degrees, 90 well, degrees. Well, the beautiful. weather in June, at end of June, typically I would say 80s, sunny, yeah. might rain, but you know, it's going to be nice. It's it won't be, be snowing. No, it's going to, it's, yeah, basically it not it's not going to be snowing. Yes. And it's, it's going to be nice weather. I, I yes. know it. Yes. You can My birthday's in June, June too. So oh, I, I, the I best month of the year then. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Um, Millie, Dawn, uh, Shariga, y'all have anything else y'all want to ask or add to the conversation? No, I don't think I have any additional questions. Um, and people on Facebook, you can ask too, because I can see your questions on here. <laughs> yes, we're going to spend about another five minutes or so. So if you have questions, go ahead and get those questions in. And after that five minutes is over, we'll wrap things up because we want to honor everybody's time and, and their personal times at home and yep. as well as our personal time because who wants to be on the computer all day? <laughs> is there any, is there a, form, a formal evening out or some kind of dance or something? There is a dance. I was just going to say that. So Saturday night after the comedians perform, we are having a DJ and his, his uh, name is DJ Madigan and he's actually... Um, the DJ for the Minnesota Lynx, which is the women's professional team, and the Minnesota Timberwolves, which is the men's professional basketball team. So, Minnesota professional basketball. basketball. Women's basketball. Women's basketball, yeah. yes. Uh, well, you know okay, what I meant. You. you got, she knows me. <laughs> you all are like, what the heck is she saying? So yes, the, the professional basketball men's and women's DJ. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, so and he, he's also connected to one of our Minnesota Vitiligo members. Always connected. So that's how we <laughs> found him. So. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so well, Alicia, I have, a, I have a question. That the, um, You said after the co comedy show, there's going to be a dance. So um, will there be, is that the... Um, because I know last conference, past conferences I went to, they had um, like dinners, like, you know, Sit down dinners, people dressed up. Is that that's is that mm -hmm. going to happen, or is that just a dance? It's just a dance. Yeah. Thing? No. This Saturday at evening. So let me pull up the schedule. So Saturday evening will be so five thirty. We'll five thirty to six thirty will be drinks and mingling. Six thirty mm -hmm. is when dinner is served. Um, from 7.30 to 8, we'll do some awards banquet type of things and recognition, that kind of stuff. Um, then we're going to throw in a fun little uh, Know Your Minnesota game. Mm -hmm. um, and then the comedians will go. And then after the comedians go, we'll have the DJ. So, oh, okay. kind of, yeah, okay. that's the whole spiel on, on Saturday night. So, and okay. during that time, if the kids are like, okay, I'm done with dinner. I don't want to do this anymore with these stupid adults. Um, they will have their own room and we'll probably do like, uh, a movie party or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, there okay. is a, a, a pool in the hotel. It's actually an indoor pool, which is great for people with a bit of Lego. Mm -hmm. um, so if kids want to go swim, they can go swim. It won't be something that we will watch over just liability things. Um, but if parents want to go take their kids and then go swim in, they're allowed to do that. Awesome. Will there be a soul train dance competition there during the party? 
It so should be, right? Not for me. I'll lose like horribly. <laughs> Look, I'm throwing it out there. Hey, let's have a, let's have a competition. <laughs> Only if you started up, Mark. Only if you started yeah, right? up. <laughs> All right, okay. okay. He, he started it, so hey. Put me on the spot now. Hey, you know, when you challenge people, hey, we're going to break it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, yeah, I, I know like Houston people did like a dress up thing, you know, like a, they did a 70s night, thing. which was fun, but I'm just like, whatever. I'm such a casual person that I'm just like, come as you are, have a good time. Yeah. I don't care. Well, you know, like just, yeah, just no pressure, be yourself. No um, pressure, be yourself. Exactly. Especially good no judgment. Person. Yeah. You know, yeah. people are flying and people are driving. There are only so much space in their, you know, little suitcase. And if you want to bring stuff back from the giant mall of America, like yeah, Millie does, yeah. you got no room for costumes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mill, Millie's going to fly with an empty suitcase, but when she <laughs> leaves... Or she's going to buy another suitcase <laughs> at the mall. Yeah. Fill it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got to check some bags here now. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I, I think we're going to have such a great time. Um, I think it's time, you know, it, it's been quite a long time since we, we were able to get together and, um, you know, and, and we need that attention. We need that time together. We need time to laugh. We need time to cry and hug and, and shed tears and of joy because we haven't seen people in a long time or somebody like me, I haven't met half the people that I've talked to, you know, so it, it it's time for us to do this, you know. So that actually brings me back to something too. You just said you haven't been there and haven't met people before. So one thing that we're implementing this year, and this came from Denise Blanks and Renee Tillman, they came up with an idea of a first timers table. So if you've never been to the conference and you come to register, you'll have your registration table, but then there's also going to be this table set up for people that have never come. So you will automatically have two friends when you first get there, Ben Brown and, Ali and Allison Hope. Huh? Sure, from Dallas, um, and Ben is from Tennessee, and they're there to welcome you and say, okay, you're a first timer, here you go. So Don, you're from Indiana, guess what? So-and-so over here is from Indiana. Hey, guess what? You two are gonna talk. So that way you're not like sitting at your table by yourself, not knowing what to do, not who to talk to. Um, you're feeling welcome and, and having that person to connect to, hopefully for the whole entire conference. If anything, you got Ben and Allison right there at your, um, at your side there to help you. So I think that was something that was a great idea by, by um, Renee. And we want to implement that because I think that's so important because it can be very overwhelming for first timers. I mean, this will be my fifth conference. So, you know, I'm looking at like family reunion type of thing, but Tiffany's going to walk in there like, <laughs> like deer and yeah, right. I'll be like, get away! Look at all my new friends. <laughs> right. And, right. And so somebody I, like me, I'm gonna walk in and go, "Hey, I spoke to you before, but I've only yeah. seen you in that but little box." Now exactly. You can exactly. take a hug. Right. Oh, I know. Like how? Yeah. <laughs> it's so nice. So oh, anyway, so that was something I wanted to mention too. I thought that was such an important <laughs> thing that we had to have. But that's good. That's good. That that will help us out a lot. Because, you know, some of us are introverted by nature and we're kind of standoffish. So that'll give us an opportunity to actually fellowship with people before we have to actually talk to more people. Yes. Yes, for sure. Well, I don't have anything else. Um, does anybody else have anything you want to add? Do you have any questions from Facebook? Millie's waving. I think she has a question to comment. I just have a comment. Um, I'm a Leo and I've been eyeing that picture behind you, Mark. So you might as well just bring that with you. Oh, that, look at the lion. I yes. Know. I've been eyeing that picture. I was like, yeah, I like that picture. If, if I, I can if I can fit it in my suitcase or I can mail it to you. <laughs> She's like, I'm, I'm guessing you painted that. Yeah, yeah, that's that. Oh, let me talk Was about that one that of your okay. classes. When I do presentations, um I, I use a poem that I wrote. It's called The Pride. It's about a lion that develops vitiligo. Mm. And in that series, there's a series of paintings that each, all the animals have vitiligo. Hmm. And um, so that's one out of, I have six. I actually sold one painting, so I have to do some more. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, Y'all can keep talking. I love it. <laughs> so registration starts on Friday night, just FYI for people coming in. It's from four to 7 p.m. Look at that, that's amazing. Oh, I love that. Um, 4 to 7 p.m. Um, and then also, if you don't end up coming on Friday and for some reason come on Saturday, we'll have it open again at 8, 8, 7, 8, or, I don't remember, 7 or 8 a.m. We'll get you in. 
See, like, I can't do that. Mine would look like giant blobs of paint. <laughs> He's Bob Ross. Well, in his well what, what happens in the story, the, the actual, um, the lion, and I'll send you that link to it so you can actually hear it. Um, he finds, he loses his tribe, his pride, and he finds his pride through other animals that have vitiligo. That's cool. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. It is cool. I like Very that. Cool. Love it. So I use that when I present to kids. Um, now I'll probably, oh crap. I wish I could bring them with me, but I'll probably put them in a slide there you uh, go. when I do my presentation. Good idea. There you go. That would be cool. So yeah, so Mark was saying like he, part of his, I know we're keep going on, sorry. Part of his session is part is the one for the parents, the siblings and the kids. Um, and like we're having him do this because he has presented in schools before. So a lot of times parents don't know that how to introduce their child's vitiligo to teachers, to coaches, to whatever. What do we say? Like, how do we bring it up? How, do, how does a kid start a new school and have to be like, oh, I have vitiligo. So this is one way through a presentation. There's amazing children's vitiligo books. We'll have, you know, options to show you for that. Just a way to introduce your your child's vitiligo to, you know, the world, basically. Um, and that's why uh, we're having Mark do that session, because I think it's, it's so important for parents. Absolutely. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> it's going to be fun. You're welcome. It's going to be fun. I'll try to make it interactive and fun. And um, I, I'm going to share one story, and we're going to, okay, it's almost 9 o'clock. <laughs> like um, I know, we keep talking. <laughs> But I did one presentation I'm talking about, first we talked about differences and, you know, and then ways we are alike. Mm -hmm. And I started talking about vitiligo. And before you know it, I had the kids looking at their arms going, well, you, you don't have vitiligo, sorry. <laughs> it's not, you <laughs> know, but us. <laughs> they, they become curious and it, then they're like, it's cool. I want vitiligo too. It's like, no, no, oh, I understand you, you, you know. I understand where they were coming from, but it, it's we're not so something crazy. we wake up wanting, you know. Yeah. Which, how powerful is that? How, th you know, how things have changed. I mean, that's an amazing thing right there, I think. Absolutely. I love it. Well, on that note, I would like to thank all of you who were here on here live with us. Thank you, Alicia, for all that information. Tiffany, Millicent, Shariga, Dawn for being here. And for all the Facebook listeners, we don't know who's out there listening, but thank you for listening. And you can share this out or watch it later um, to get more information about uh, the conference. And we greatly appreciate you being here. So everyone, y'all take care. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Yes, and thank